talk to my uh, colleague uh, whether we are able to start. There will be more guests to join us. However, in the interest of time, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, good to start. And uh, therefore, I'm, I'm very, very happy yeah, to welcome engineer Gamma Kot, uh, general manager of Mizzle Technologies or MTS. Uh, and uh, he's a, he's a close partner uh, to us, uh, helping us with a lot of information to be shared with uh, the exporters as well as the importers yeah, due to the digitization of the customs procedures. Yeah, this is going to fly 1st of October and what we hear since there was already a, a kind of a, a delay, it was postponed, but uh, what we hear is that 1st of yeah, uh, October is going to be the starting date. With me, uh, uh, next to Mr. Gamal Kot, are two colleagues of mine who are very crucial in our services catered to you. This is once my uh, colleague uh, Karin El Shafei and my colleague May Khatab, um, who are in our yeah, German Arab Chamber of Industry and Commerce, so the AHK in Egypt who are yeah, our centers of competencies and who are willing to support you in each and every question you may have yeah, uh, after this yeah, uh, um, session. Now, you have, all of you have lots of questions. Yeah, we, will, we will have a presentation of Engineer Kot and uh, thereafter he's going to answer most or if not all of your questions you may have. So we have plenty of room for discussion. And uh, I'm very happy that Mr. Otinski, a representative of Cargo X, joined us as well today. And uh, if there are yeah, detailed questions to Cargo X, so the blockchain, yeah, uh, which is uh, very important yeah, for the exporters, yeah, um, uh, he will certainly be able and willing yeah, to answer your questions uh, to this extent. Um, having said that, I, I believe we jump right in. Yeah, guests from Egypt and from Germany, uh, and uh, we have guests from uh, Europe as well. Uh, so outside of Germany, yeah, I'm as uh, interested as you are, Mr. Kot. You are... Yeah. Are in right? <laughs> yes, Good. I'm in. I'm Good. trying to save some Good. energy on the internet bandwidth to avoid any inconvenience. So I'm just sharing uh, my video screen now. I'll be uh, discontinuing it just to make sure that the quality of sound and everything else is the same. Good right. morning that to you all. I uh, switch off my camera. The floor is yours. All right. Uh, Good to Morgan. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be with you uh, in this session. I hope it's it, it's it's fruitful. Uh, I made it very concise uh, to focus on your questions and whatever that you would need that we can help with. So it, if you would excuse me, I'll turn off the video and I'll share the screen uh, so that we start. Thank you. And as long as Engineer Cod is doing that, if you have questions, kindly use the chat. Uh, type your questions. My colleague will make sure that you will not be forgotten. Sure. Do you see something? Do you hear me well so that I can proceed? Yes and yes. OK. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jan. All right, uh, today uh, I have actually uh, a few points on mind. This is my mind map. It doesn't look colorful as it is. It is more complex and intricate. However, uh, for this session, I'm, uh, I'll be discussing with you uh, three main things. One of them, the latest updates, just give you highlights on where things are going, what we were able to achieve over the past few weeks. And another, another uh, anchor is the e-invoice. I'd like to shed some light and focus on the e-invoice because that is one of the main things that I really uh, like to thank uh, the German Chamber and uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Karen for uh, facilitating. And of course, Jan, when we met uh, the other day, actually I requested that and uh, she kindly uh, helped us 
uh, get uh, get this event. And the third thing is the registration and the tokens and stuff, because I believe now today we are the 6th of September, so it's just less like the 24, 25 days until it's the beginning of October. So uh, I thought that uh, those three topics would be of interest to you. Um, all right, let me just take it from here. Okay. Let me t let's take things uh, first. Now to brief you on what how things are going, Apart, I all uh, and I fully understand that you all know that the uh, business cases like the consolidated uh, shipments, like those for special government agencies, like all the uh, triangular, uh, let's say, business interactions, all these sorts of things have been handled within the within the system. However, on top of that, uh, we have to, we try to really focus the, based on your feedback and input. Uh, to the system, we actually simplified the initial screens for our uh, Egyptian importer colleagues who are here and for everybody, of course. Uh, we reduced the number of required data elements for the ACID requests in order to uh, make it simpler to them, uh, make the data that they input as accurate as possible, because the more questions I'd ask, the, they would certainly answer, but then the opportunity and the frequency of change will, will, will increase. So uh, rather than doing all this and getting back for them to, to, to change and modify things, as business would call, we actually uh, limit and uh, reduce the number of fields to keep it to the minimum set that is possible for customs and the other departments who are interested into looking into the ACI, ACI application form in order for them to issue the ACID number quickly. Another, another topic was another item in a sense, we actually, from talking with your good selves, we found out that there were kind of uh, a lot of, uh, more than one actually, uh, more than one multinational company, big companies who have sister companies underneath them, like, a, uh, and in, the, in that case, like a corporate and underneath it, it will be five, 10 or more uh, companies underneath them. And they wanted to have uh, one, in a sense, uh, account uh, administrator on all, on all the sister company accounts on the FISA. In the past, each company would have uh, would have nominated uh, a person who would be in charge of taking care of the accounts. I mean, the uh, accounts for the uh, business users for that company who will be interacting and using the FISA portal to do the business for that company. Under under this scenario now today, uh, we allow we cater for uh, those cases whereby. The big, the corporate, the corporate company or the corporate department will nominate a single person who would be able to manage manage all the accounts underneath them without any trouble. Uh, the third item is uh, goes to the other side to my friend Viren here. I'm glad that he is with us here, and I'll let him talk about the details when it comes. It's basically that uh, Cargo X, our friends Cargo X, observed cases whereby. There were uh, uh, companies abroad and especially in Europe who, who would have presence in more than one country as opposed to, uh, I'm not talking about companies, it is the same company that would have presence in more than one country and each in each country they would have a VAT ID for themselves. But they are internally, they are all one and the same. So that what has been handled, and as I said, my colleague uh, Vieran should be able to really give all the clarification that is needed. But it is a relief as it really reflects the nature of the business itself, so that actually it becomes natural, it becomes accurate, and everything becomes uh, simple and peaceful. The last point in my, my summary and latest updates here, it's, I think it's another relief. I'm talking about the documents that are similar to the uh, certificate of origin. The certificate of origin, of course, was now is uh, is not. It's not mandatory uh, unless there is exemption. I'll put that exception. Uh, it's not mandatory to do anything to do any stamping on it and this and that. That is relieved. So the, a question, another question was asked to the Ministry actually of of Trade. Uh, concerning the e-mark and the ILAC certificates, which are needed for, I think, quality, quality certification purposes uh, of the shipments that are bound to Egypt. Now, uh, those two documents in particular, we are working on the others as well. But however, for e-mark and ILAC certificates, 
Now, it is not mandatory to have the original documents, uh, okay? It will be, it will suffice to send the copy of these documents uh, over uh, via Cargo X as usual. And then when the shipment comes in, the, uh, the, the officer, the designated officer, will check up the authenticity of the, of the document online uh, via, via the portal that is uh, actually uh, provided or availed by the EMARC and ILAC authorities, if I may call them so. So then this is another burden that is being a, a kind of relieved, and that can really uh, aims at the end of the day at facilitating and expediting the clearance process. Okay, now having said that, I'd like to move to uh, the other main topic, which is concerning the registration. Now, we are talking about October 1st, I'd like to share with you a few figures, and I'd like to say why I'm, I'm talking about this. Now, if, I, if we all agree that in October 1st, and, and the government actually, the Minister of Finance declared that last week in an event, with, uh, a week or 10 days, when we had an event uh, where we, so many embassies were invited and designated uh, companies and stuff like that. And he was very, uh, very, in a sense, uh, Emphasizing in his words, he said that October 1st, the ACI system is going to be launched in production environment. It will be live. There's no going back. There's no extension. There's no delays. So having said that, this simple word means a lot to you, whether you being an importer or an exporter abroad. Because in order for you to interact with the ACI system under any, under any uh, circumstance, I mean circumstance, whether you are fully ready, you are half ready, you are just started to be ready, whatever. So no matter what you are, go how ready you are, you would need to, of course, to, to use the system and interact in order to help the process come out securely and safely. And the basic step into this, regardless of whatever that you are shipping, the, your documents, whatever, whether the electronic, half electronic, whatever, you need to be registered on the portal, on the platform, that would uh, provide you with the electronic services that you would be responsible for or looking for. On the exporter side, I'm sharing a little, a little, uh, a little diagram here in the, in the bar chart. It's talking about the top, just the top countries. We didn't take all, all the countries in the world that have registered in Cargo X, and you can see that Germany is standing here now at 17, uh, 1,784 companies. I mean, uh, 1,784 exporting companies have registered on uh, Cargo X. I need to mention something that the registration in Cargo X is not, it's just not a matter of really inputting your data. And I'll let Vieron again talk about that in detail. It, it takes a few steps on Cargo X uh, part in order to validate, verify, and know the customer, I mean the exporter. So that you, if you are an exporter, you have a credible record, you can do your business in an easy manner and straightforward without further questions. It is actually a safeguard to you as an exporter, since you're going to send and uh, send information from your end all the way to, to Egypt to the importer. You should be uh, very confident and, 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 and happy that this is uh, the privacy is concerned, the security is, is, is really achieved. On the importer side, on the importer side here, it is important. The table I'm showing here shows uh, interesting figures. Actually, we look into the top top uh, 1,000 importers of Egypt, 1,000 importers by value of goods, by value of importation. The top 1,000 actually contribute to 74.7% of total, imp uh, total imports. Out of those 1,000, out of those 1,000, uh, 86%, 86.1%, so this means that 860 companies are already registered on the FESA portal. Now, if I increase a little bit, the top 2,000 contribute to 83.8, as you would see, and uh, actually 82% are, are registered. These 82% actually, uh, actually are about 1,600, uh, 1,644. If I go to the top 3,000, I'm above 90% as far as the total imports of Egypt by value is concerned. And the total number of those 3,000 is 77.3. We are not far. I, we are striving to have, especially 
the top companies who really contribute to the importation and then definitely will be exportation to be reaching 100% so that at least these companies have the capability to log into the system to look into into what uh, how things are and to look into their transactions in order to lodge and request uh, new shipments for importation and stuff when we talk about the top 3000 we are talking about top top 3000 out of about 24 uh, 24000 uh, companies there is a lot of, of companies who really would import once or twice a year or whatever so uh, actually you guys uh, our uh, dear colleagues here in this uh, in this meeting and the others who are not present even it is is of extreme importance from my point of view that you are actually uh, ready ready with your registration on the portal registering on the portal is not that uh, it's not that difficult and uh, but please don't wait until it's the 28th of september and then start really proceeding to really register actually we we really sometimes create our own problems so now we have let's say 25 days it's ample time for those who actually are not ready yet to proceed and go ahead and Actually, after you register on the Egyptian portal Nafisa, you would need to obtain an uh, an electronic uh, to an e-token, which is like similar to the flash memory. It's a device. It's a, it is a personalized device. I mean, it is not a device that is uh, actually given or provided to a company. It is provided to the employees in that company who are going to actually interact with Nafisa whether in uh, inputting uh, requests for importation, ACI application forms, or following up on their transactions and proceeding all the way. Plus, one major thing is co-signing, I mean approving in a legal manner using their e-token, the authenticity or the validity, the completeness, the accuracy of the documents that they will receive electronically via Cargo X. So, in other words, if you are registered as a company and you define the staff members in your company who are going to really deal with Nafeza and the ACI system. But if you don't, uh, if those staff members do not have e-tokens, then they will be in a sense halfway through. Why? They will be able, of course, to uh, log in, to sign in, to look to really uh, advance by logging, uh, by, by declaring an ACI application request. However, when the documents come, they will not be able to really uh, proceed with the cycle, which means look into the documents, approve them so that customs and the banks start really making use of the documents that you approved of. So it is very important and uh, I'm, uh, in this regard and in order to facilitate to you as importers in Egypt, I'm talking about the Nafeza side here. Now, as you know, by law, there are two major companies who deal with uh, issuing the e-tokens. The e-token is issued by Sharikat al-Maqasa or Egypt Trust. Egypt Trust is actually uh, the more active company by far, okay? Because al-Maqasa is main is mainly in the, the stock market and stuff like that. So, uh, but this uh, the Egypt Trust is the one that's core business is uh, issuing e-tokens. Uh, Egypt Trust has an office at the airport. You can go, of, of course, you can visit their site. Okay, I think it's in the sixth of October, in the vicinity of that or you can go at the airport we have another one in alexandria we have the third one uh, we have the third one in um, in port said uh, the reason for all this is to really get closer to your to you as companies and for uh, and for the process to happen so quickly it is uh, in order for anyone to obtain an e token it's not that difficult it's about uh, actually having a, a copy of his national id plus uh, an application form that fills in the, his particulars, he signs on it, and then the company will produce the e-token and hand it and hand it out to the person uh, when it comes. I think it takes about maybe 48 days, uh, 48 hours, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it costs something like, uh, I don't know, something between uh, maybe 900 to, 11, uh, to 1100 Egyptian pounds. I'm not quite sure. This is just the basic information that I know. Again, it is very important for the exporters and the importers to be at least capable to really uh, get started, regardless from how far they are ready. 
but at the end of the day, please don't be out because at the end of the day, it could be a problem and which we want to avoid. Now, uh, my third topic here is uh, of importance from another angle. Of course, you know, as exporters, you are required, exporter or the freight forwarder, you would be required to send the shipping documents uh, to Egypt, to your counterpart importer in Egypt via uh, Cargo X portal. All documents, all documents are sent are sent in PDF formats. So these are like uh, images of these of these documents, which is. Okay. You do one hour. I will send you. I will send you this uh, this uh, web document. I will try to see uh, if I could send you also the contact. Some, uh, maybe somebody kindly. would need to close the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn the mic. Yeah, off. yeah. Kindly mute your microphones, please. Thank you. Oh, you can. Thank you so you. much. All right. Uh, now, uh, as I was saying, all documents are sent in PDF formats, and actually, we actually made things even simpler concerning the bills of lading. I uh, used to ask in the initial initial stage, used to say uh, we need maybe the, the the draft bill of lading and then the final bill of lading and stuff. Now we just suffice with the final bill of lading once it is issued. Uh, after vessel departure, so there is no concern. So we are reducing, we are reducing the number of documents uh, as much as we can. Now, uh, out of these documents, the uh, the invoice uh, is of great importance in the ACI system and, and the ACI and the cargo clearance process. Why? Because it, of course, it obviously it contains the details about the shipment. Okay, and uh, the cargo clearance uh, procedure really talks about duties and taxes and whatever additional fees that are collected, and they are all based on uh, the value and the type of goods and the so forth. Uh, traditionally, Egypt was accepting invoices at, uh, in a sense, I would say, a high level of description. And in this regard, those of you who are uh, those uh, of you, of course, well, who are in the, in the business of the importation and exportation, they do understand that it used to happen at the what they call the HS code, the harmonized system uh, code. The harmonized system, the HS code, is an internationally, uh, let's say, uh, uh, recognized structure for classifying goods. Rather than saying pen, you would tell me, for example, 01, 02, or 3, 04. This means that it is uh, something to write with. It doesn't talk about the, the Parker pen versus a cross pen versus a big pen. It is about something to write with. And of course, this is a tree structure that really refines uh, any device into further details. There are categories in it. This could be further refined. Now, having said that, as I said, it is a, a classification way of the goods does not tell us exactly what it is that you are importing. You are importing mineral water. OK, there is a tariff code for that, HS code for that, 07, 08, 09, 10, suppose. But of course, mineral water has plenty of brands, and they differ, differ actually. In this regard, uh, the Egyptian government uh, decided, and you know that, I'm just trying to, uh, to remind you of everything, that uh, those high level uh, information were not uh, sufficient enough in, to help out the clearance process or help out any risk assessment in the future or valuation or valuation as well. So it was decided that invoices should come detailed at the product level that is coming. So you will give me, in a sense, the part number of what it is that you are sending to exporting to me. If you are sending to me pens, there are four types of pens, one of them is one dollar the other one is fifteen dollar whatever the other one is a thousand dollar or so you tell me from this part number this is the quantity this is the unit value and this is unit price and so forth so that being said this means that the invoice that used to be a one line item or a two line item in the past as of october 1st that invoice may be one page or two page or still one page why because pens will be detailed into the particular types of pens you are sending or mineral water or phones or whatever. OK, so that's this means that will be more data entry to be carried out by somebody. How would our system know 
about what it is coming. Somebody will, will do the data entry. Traditionally, it, it was the importer or his broker who do the data entry. With thicker invoices, bigger number of pages for invoices, there will be that the, the probability of errors and mistakes and not only typos, but missing lines or whatever will be higher. This is number one. Second, since you are not relying any longer on physical documents to be uh, the originals to be coming, then and we are relying on electronic data in this regard, then uh, we decide it was required that the exporter would send, of course, the invoice, which is in a PDF, like I said, for all the other documents. Now, in the for the invoice in particular, we uh, requested or Egypt, I mean, requested that the invoice uh, not, does not only come in as a picture, but comes as data itself, so that once it gets past Cargo X, Nafeza can absorb this data, put it and store it into the database to make the data really readable in a readable manner, along with the copy of the picture itself, for the importer to really review, to add on any additional local requirements for the Egyptian government. When If you are importing a pen, Egypt will ask you for maybe three, four other fields for, it, for, for local processing in customs. So uh, uh, that, I, and, and during the past period, we have been in a sense struggling, and you guys, the importer side, may be struggling, well, we're struggling uh, in, in really trying to satisfy this request. Some of them said, well, uh, the, 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 the way you want this structured data is not supported by our systems, the systems that we used in, in our companies to, to generate that. Uh, we initially, in order to facilitate things from our standpoint, we provided, as you can look at the bottom of my screen here, we provided the uh, Microsoft Excel, in a sense, Microsoft Excel um, uh, uh, form so that it could be filled. Of course, of course, it, this could be, this could work for those who really do not export as much frequently or who have one line or two line items, then this I can spend uh, two, three minutes, fill it in and send it out. That would be fair enough. Now, uh, uh, for, for those guys, and we figured out by talking to most companies which we could talk to, that the, a big, big number of them, around 80% of those who we talk to are using SAP SAP uh, ERP system, Enterprise Resource Planning uh, software in the, to manage uh, the resources and enterprises. And in this regard, we act actually after do, doing the necessary efforts to really see what SAP offers when it comes to generating uh, invo uh, invoices. And we came we came out with a with a, with a, with a finding that the invoice o, uh, invoice O2, uh, which is an XML message for from for the tech of those techies who are attending here, it's a standard. Uh, when you print the invoice out of SAP, you can say let's print it or print it as PDF or print it as XML format. In XML format, if you do that as an exporter, you generate the 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 the, the invoice in order to let's say sign it and put your company stamp on it and have it pictured as PDF, this is one. If you if you generate the, the invoice as SAP, we on the FISA side, we would be able to really read that XML formatted uh, invoice and extract the data and put it in, 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 in the FISA so that your counterpart importer can really do his thing uh, peacefully. Having said that, we are currently working as I speak. Here on this SAP, we are doing testing. We put big invoices to see that everything is actually flawless and everything was good. We will be doing the same thing for Oracle, for those companies who rely on Oracle Financial Suite to manage their enterprise. We will be doing the same thing for Oracle so that Oracle can generate its an electronic formatted invoice that could be really uh, received and uh, processed speedily, accurately, and everything would be great. Uh, in this, I'd like to grasp the opportunity before I really close and look into the RPA thing. Please, I would like uh, for those of you guys, exporters who are with the, who, you, who are with us, if you can kindly, in a sense, we look into a mechanism now, a simple mechanism. I'd like to know your company and if you are using any software 
to manage your enterprise, uh, SAP. Tell us whether it's SAP, whether it's uh, Microsoft, Great Plains, whether it's Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics, with Oracle or any other system, so that we are trying to see where where the majority or where there are a lot of, of exporters uh, systems that are being in use. We can really look into things and uh, and accept, in a sense, the uh, electronic invoices from those software natively. So you as exporters wouldn't have to bear any extra burden at your end to send the shipment documents to Egypt. It would come very easy to you. One last thing, apart from SAP, Oracle, and any other, which we are now currently investigating and requesting, and we are even requesting from the importers here in Egypt to talk, communicate to their exporters, to request any information about any software system that they use, because we will look into these things to resolve them. We provide here at the last line of my screen a robotic process automation uh, service that would take uh, a PDF to really transform it into electronic data structures that Nafisa can really read and put into the system. Having said reporting, uh, robotic process automation, this means machine learning, uh, optical character recognition, because it will take a picture in a sense and try to digest it to come up with the data of it. And in saying so, of course, if the image the order, if the file that we are talking about is not a high quality, it's not in high quality, it is overshadowed, the, 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 the ink that was used is little fading. If there are any handwritings or stamps on it or whatever, sometimes data could be of less quality. This means that you would need more uh, more staff members to do a support site to really validate the automatically detected low quality fields. The software in the robotic process automation, once it does the conversion, it will show all the fields that it extracted with a percentage of confidence. So you can see that anything beyond 90% is prone to be error. It guides you to where you need to put. Usually the guy who would be sitting on, on the screen will say, okay, this is not a six, it is a five. It was not clear enough, this is a five. And by the way, this process gets into the machine. The next time, the same exporter who would send uh, another invoice, all right, uh, and he and, and the, the machine would have learned that his way of maybe typing or the font that he uses or whatever, it's not a six, it's a five. So it would mature by time. This facility actually will be, uh, all the, all the, the, this facility will be available to the, those interested uh, exporters at, uh, for the next six months on a free of charge basis until they can really accommodate for such a requirement on their own to be able to send things from their side without need any uh, transformation. It will be a free of charge. It will be availed uh, via, uh, through the Cargo X platform. So those who will be interested, they will branch out from Cargo X to use that, uh, let's say, uh, third party uh, service that would do the job. The, the job, once it's done, the, uh, let's say, an Excel file will come to you to the requester so that before him uploading it on Cargo X, he would see for himself all the Excel components. He would look into the tallies that are calculated. He is happy that, uh, okay, is it, well, it was well uh, translated. Then he can really push it forward uh, as usual to, uh, to, to Nafisa and then to the importer. With, the, with this, uh, I'd like to, to put an end to my little my little uh, presentation, and I'd like to open the door for questions and any inquiries that we can help with. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Gamal, thank you indeed yeah, for yeah, your presentation. Um, interesting, yeah. However, allow me to address our guests yeah, first before we open the floor yeah, on, on uh, a topic which was mentioned in a chat now a couple of times. Uh, allow me first of all to apologize uh, uh, that I did not mention the recording uh, when we started it, yeah, but I'm so much used to our common sessions yeah, that, I, that I did not do it. Now, the good news is yeah, we ran already six, seven of these uh, webinars and I can understand that many of our guests have different insight yeah, to the ACI process, to NAFISA, to Cargo X. Yeah, dear guests, 
kindly if you go to YouTube and you basically plug in yeah German Arab Chamber of Industry and Commerce or AHK and my colleagues are going to put our two names in the chat if you plug that in then you get all our videos and kindly look into the videos not only this one but look into the videos which we already uploaded since uh, we explain yeah uh, engineer Kamal and uh, Mr. Rotinsky yeah explain the procedures of how to do what to do at length yeah um, so uh, in addition, you may have a look at uh, our website uh, of the German Arab Chamber since uh, there are already like uh, many, many uh, questions and answers. There is a Q&A. Yeah. And having said that, the first question I would raise to you, Mr. Kot, you mentioned don't wait until 28th of September. That has a reason, yeah, since the process of getting registered is not being done within a day. I understand that correctly. Do yes, uh, yes, this is true. This is very true, Jan, because uh, the last time when we were to start in the beginning of July, all right, everything was going at a slow pace and uh, two weeks before beginning of July, I mean the, the latter half of June, we got, I mean, hundreds upon hundreds every single day from every single site for companies who were trying to register. That, of course, of course, caused a backlog. So we needed to triple and put four times actually a uh, number of staff members. We work in shifts in order to get the job done. And uh, mind you, one important thing for those in our Egyptian importers, it is not about registering really information on a system and letting you get into. You need to be actually uh, very confident that your account is private. It can, it's not inf inf infiltratable by anybody. So in order for us to do, since we do data and put data on computers, we are prone to doing errors. If I did something, uh, I'm, I suppose I was one of those st staff members, I may be mistakenly uh, opening, uh, opening a gap that would let somebody else look or get into your account. So it is it, it, is actually it requires some time to do not only the data entry of such information but to cross check it against the counterpart like customs and GOIC plus make sure that we did not really mistype any VAT ID or anything else we need to make sure that your data is correct and safe and so that your account is healthy that is why it as as Jan mentioned it takes about um, from a day to two now it's I mean, it, it used to be a seven eight days during that uh, crunchy crunchy time. Now it takes, I think, a little bit of a day to get done. So rather than waiting and then getting into long queues and long number, uh, I I'm advising that you we use the time from now to complete the job if it was not completed already. Thank you. Thank you indeed and allow me and then we go into the single question. Some of these questions uh, you, you explained already, but you may repeat it since uh, we had in between, yeah, uh, a little bit of, uh, let's say, issues to follow you. Yeah, so you may repeat that. But before I do that, yeah, uh, dear importers, as well as exporters, you may approach us as well on that topic. We help you. We help you to get registered. Yeah, whether this is, yeah, uh, from the view of an importer to be registered on NAFESA or yeah, out of the view of an exporter, yeah, to be to get registered on Cargo X. Having said that, yeah, the first question, I believe you answered that, but you may repeat it briefly. What about the Excel invoice that need to be prepared by the exporter and upload on Cargo X? This is difficult yeah, to be fulfilled by the exporter, especially for an exporter working with a system like SAP, and you explained that and invoice created via the system so it will be double efforts and manual work you have to do this excellent voice so you may repeat yeah your your statement in short what you said about this sap and the double work okay uh, i mentioned sap in the context of the invoice i said all shipment documents are required to be sent 
uh, via Cargo X in PDF format. That is a blunt statement for all the any document that you would like to that you will be sending. However, when it comes to the invoice, in addition to the PDF image of that uh, of that uh, of that invoice, uh, we would need that invoice to be in a, in a in a digital electronic data format in a format which we can read electronic like an EDI message, for example, if you're sending bills of lading, if you're sending manifests and stuff like that, so that we avoid any typos, any errors, any inconsistency, anything like that. So uh, those of you who are using SAP software in their companies, SAP, the financial module or whatever, the, the invoicing module, whatever they would call it, has a capability when it generates the invoice to say, generated as, you can say generated as a PDF file, generated as an XML XML message, generated into, it has, it offers plenty, plenty, uh, plenty of, uh, of, of, of formats for the invoice. So in this regard, we are saying, please, if, to, to satisfy the electronic data requirement, you can request to generate the invoice in XML format. It's called invoice O2, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. That will generate a file, it's not uh, a file for printing for us to look into visually. That file contains all the data of the invoice that you have requested to be generated. And that file you can really put into Cargo X envelope along with the other documents and send. We would be able on our side here to de decipher that this de data, really uh, understand the structure of the message that is coming and we will put the data in, in the right place. This is for SAP and I said, we will be working on Oracle for sure, and we uh, were asking to know if there are others. There are other main systems like Microsoft. It offers something or any anything else. We will be seeking every way possible to provide electronic means that would not put a burden on your end to generate the data in a manner that we can really uh, receive and process speedily. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, coming to the next question, this is our registration, no, the verification topic uh, when it comes to uh, documentation. Does or do the docs upload on Cargo X need to have the Chamber of Commerce stamp or can an upload of these docs be without the Chamber stamp? And if you answer that, you may yeah, comment on the verification of the embassy as well. Yeah. Uh, actually, certification the 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 Egyptian uh, embassy is not required at all. Okay. When, when, when the the Chamber of Commerce is only needed will be the, the need for the Chamber of Commerce will only be limited to certain cases. Like in general, the answer will not be needed. This is to make it simple. However. Uh, at the moment, as I speak, uh, if uh, if some of the documents uh, would have the effect of exemption and stuff, then it will have to be uh, uh, stamped by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is at the moment. This doesn't mean to say that it will last forever until we find better means. But in general, no, you don't need to have that. You just uh, get the get the bill of lading, for example, send it. Get the packing list, send. Do. Yeah. As, 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 as you get the doc without any further effort. Yeah, uh, allow me, allow me uh, to verify to the German exporters there, whereas you don't have to send your BL to the embassy for their verification. Yeah, sure. this does not mean yeah, that yeah, there is now an uh, acceptance of automatically issued BLs. Yeah, so yeah. Uh. The, still has to be issued the same way as in the past. We are working on that, that there is an acceptance yeah, of automatically issued BLs, but as of today, this wouldn't be the case. Uh, Mr. Beam, you raised your hand. If you have a question to that topic, then go ahead. Otherwise, yeah, we'll put you to the end. Uh. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Nöter. Um, uh, exactly, I've got a question in, in direct connection to uh, what Mr. Kutter uh, just explained. So, in fact, um, in general terms, there is no certificate of origin necessary anymore, except for some specific cases uh, regarding exemptions or whatsoever. Did I understand that right, Mr. Kutter? Uh, 
uh, it's yes and no. Let me clarify that in a bit. Number one, by the way, you need to know that if on your invoice you stipulate the origin of the goods, you wouldn't need the certificate of origin itself. The invoice itself, the invoice document itself will suffice. This is a concept. Uh, the certificate of origin for things coming from Europe are in cases that are subject to some exemptions, some exemptions, exemptions from the duties and tax, customs duties and stuff. At the moment, as I speak, those cases, this is the thing that we are actually getting from customs at the moment, these invoices would need to have the stamp from the Chamber of Commerce in order to entertain the, 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 the exemption. Now we, are, we would be looking into further means to alleviate that as well, but to make sure about the, to ensure the authenticity of the certificate of origin itself. Like for example, if the German Chamber of Commerce abroad in Germany has like a portal like a vis like the ILAC and the uh, the uh, the other European whatever uh, document that I mentioned earlier, so it would it would won't be necessary. All you need to do is just send the reference number of your certificate of origin. Then in Egypt here we can really make sure that your reference number is intact and we'll get the details from the from the from the website itself of the Chamber Chamber who issued the Chamber of Commerce uh, the the certificate of origin itself. All right. Uh, uh, so in order for you to obtain the certificate of origin, what I reckon from Jan and the other the other time, it gets generated from the Chamber of Commerce itself. Am I right? It you will you will generate it and actually in some companies they do they have the they are entitled to generate it under the actually the acceptance of the Chamber of Commerce directly so to facilitate things uh, get going that will be needed but you don't need to stamp it what i'm saying is you don't need to stamp it you need the, the paper itself without a stamp see what i mean this is this is what i meant yeah so in all cases you need the you need the certificate of origin if there are special cases like exemption stuff you need the stamp until further notice all right and equally, if you stipulate the origin of the goods on the invoice itself, you wouldn't need to send the uh, the, the certificate of origin. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Kutub, for the explanation. Thank you, Dane. So now I I do have another raised hand, but uh, in the interest yeah of yeah so many questions we receive through the chat yeah uh, I would ask yeah the remaining guests please use the chat so otherwise yeah our other guests will not be that happy. Mr. Nader Gume, you raised your hand. Do. Actually, I have something to. Uh, 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 buy it from germany uh, some machine from my factory so i must register it in the nafeza um, or export import company only now uh, the answer thank you mr nether if i understand your question clearly uh, your factory i don't know about your situation you may be licensed to conduct importation or exportation or you may not. You could be at the factory. You do manufacturing of, of, of goods. Yes. So in this case, you are not. You don't have a permit, if I may call it that way, to import. In this regard, you will have a company that will do that transaction for you. Am I right in understanding this? Yes. 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 I'm just that just manufacturer under construction. Excellent. But uh, يعني هل أنت عندك ترخيص استيراد from Goic? لا. أنا عندي شركة مساهمة. ما عنديش ترخيص استيراد. Sure. Then the company that has the right to do the importation activity for you, okay, if this is the one that needs to be registered on Nafisa. Oh, yes, I mean it. Okay, I understand now. That's fine. Yes. And equally, of course, the exporter from which you are importing the machinery needs to be registered on Cargo X. Yes, she already, in Germany, it's already registered Excellent. on Cargo X. Excellent. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. So next question. Yeah, I have bought the e-token. When I try to activate it, it faced a technical problem as the company server is located outside of Egypt. 
What will be solution if the e-token yeah. cannot be activated before 1st of October? Can I still be able to apply for an ACID number? Okay, uh, number one, I need to clarify one important, basic imp important thing. The e-token that I'm talking about is for Egyptian importers only. Egyptian importers will not be sending documents via Cargo X to themselves. If I, if the, that company that had that e-token from abroad, are you talking that I obtained an e-token from a company abroad, like Veritas, no, like somebody else like sorry, that? Sorry, sorry, can, can I interfere because this is my question, so I can okay. clarify it more. Sure. Uh, sure. No, I am I am the importer here, but I am okay. representing an, a foreign company. So we are BSF and we are working with a server uh, connecting us from for all over the world. So for so my server is not located here in Egypt, it's located outside Egypt. Connecting me with the mother company in Germany, with, with other with other companies in Turkey, in uh, Dubai, in another uh, other countries in all over the world. So that's why when I'm trying to activate my e-token, I bought it from uh, EG Trust. When I try to activate it on my computer, which is connected with this, the, mm -hmm. the, the company sure. computer, uh, we discover that it's not ah, it cannot be seven, working, seven. and yes, uh, and that's why because the server is come is located outside. Oh, yeah. So this is my you. yes. This, that's why I say that I need to clarify. No, okay. Thank you for the question, Ellen. Uh, number one, of course, you need to know that the e token. Once you have a token and you register and you start to use it, once you do any action, you, your credentials are being verified by the issuing authority which is okay. a, which is the the uh, the minister of communications let's say in egypt mm -hmm. they has the what they call etida etida mm -hmm. has in a sense a complete register of every single person who obtained that uh, any any token okay so now actually even in the world outside in germany companies that issue tokens for 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 for, for businesses in germany if you send you send us something with an e-token from Germany, we cannot validate it and vice versa. So, see what I mean? At the moment, as we speak in the world, there's nothing like cross-country ver verification of e-tokens. It is oh, okay. in every country in itself, it really the authority, the competent authority in that country validates or verifies the tokens that are issued for the businesses inside that country. So Germany cannot really in sense send a request to ETIDA in Egypt to say, well, uh, can you check this uh, e-token for us? Mm. No. And sure. equally, Egypt cannot send uh, a request to Germany. Uh, 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 it what, is assumed what would be that the solution. The well, actually, you represent. Uh, 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 yani your your presence. Uh, when you say you're representing company, it does not represent like in the sense you are responsible for sending documents on their on their behalf. They should send the information. You have probably presence to do, uh, I don't know, business development or technical support no, or no, do no, whatever. No, no. Sorry, 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 oh. sir. I am, I am, I am company uh, registered to to import goods from uh, from outside. Right. Even, so that's even why I, 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 I am, I'm working as, uh, as uh, importer. Excellent. Elaine, if you I are an importer, that? Elaine, mm. sorry, if you, Elaine, are talking as an importer, then yes. you shouldn't have a problem. Your server abroad has nothing to do with us. You are an importer here, so you are connected to Nafesa only. You do not see the outside world as far as the importation transaction is concerned. Exactly. So, that's, so, that's okay. it. Elaine, let us yeah, let us do one thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since that is a very specific and it's a technical issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let us look into that after mm -hmm. this one. Okay. okay. Yeah, since, at, uh, at least if, if you have. You are, okay. Totally agree with you, sir. And if just my question is, if you have any someone or some contact details, I can sure. contact them so they can support sure. me in this uh, problem. You can contact By all means. us if you up. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, yeah. Let's since since we receive such a lot of uh, uh, questions, yeah, okay. um, and it's a specific one. But the server shouldn't be the problem. 
yeah, since you are an importer, right? right. So let's, if you allow me, let's continue. Yeah, mm -hmm. a German exporter with some trial orders. Yeah, the exporter uploads the docs, but did not receive confirmation from the importer or customs authority to ship the goods. You don't need to obtain any uh, if did you receive? I'm asking the question on the opposite side. Did Mr. Exporter, did you receive an ACID number for whatever shipment you are trying to send to, to export? Yes. If you received, if you have the, the ACID reference number, you don't need any further approval or permission from anybody. You send the info, you send the docs, the, your importer would receive alert that documents have arrived. Mm -hmm. He knows what to do. He's trained to do that. He will review the documents, make sure that everything is okay, uh, fill in the additional data that is required on the Egyptian declaration form, and then he will proceed. He would request on his computer to proceed with customs and the bank. So you don't need any further approval from any authority in Egypt. Okay, thank you. Because initially this was not the, the case. It was that we need our the importer need to approve or to need to check the document that uploaded in Cargo X and approve it by e-token and then to be able yes. for the exporter to ship. La 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 no, no, I mean sorry, sorry. Okay, one last statement. La, when you review and approve. After that, all you need to do to say proceed with customs at your will. You reviewed ah, everything, okay. you're happy with everything, you proceed to customs, you're not talking. He should have sent you the documents that you are reviewing. Ah, all right, okay, because this was not explained well when initially, when we uh, have our first okay. training with, uh, with this uh, system. No, okay, no. That, my, you are signing one? on the documents that were sent to you. All right. Okay. Okay, thank all you right. so much for that. Thank you, thank you. I wonder if all the company members have to have accounts on Nafesa or only one account per company. Also, is every account needed to have an e-token? Uh, okay, there are, there are two things. Now, the number, you as an administrator representing your company, you it is you who decide whether you need one, two or ten or all. Each staff member that you will request, uh, that you request, you will specify. You will nominate, say, Mr. Gamal, national ID number one, two, three, is accept. You are the one who is taking that decision. All right. By the way, you can also delegate uh, that authority to a brokerage office. So, uh, not only you, you are a big importer, you don't have too many staff members. You have five, four, or five, and then you can have as well one or more broker office to do the job for you. OK, this is uh, number one. An e-token is issued on an individual level. It's a person. It's like a credit card. It's not like a corporate credit card or something. It is an, a token for Mr. X, Mr. Y. So whoever you are going to designate, each one of them will need to do that. Otherwise, if they do not have, they would have limited, in a sense, uh, uh, limited facilities on Nafesa. They can, for example, they can look and review, do data entry, do everything else, but they will not be able to authorize the transaction to proceed to customs because he needs to have this token in it. But he can look up things since he has a, uh, an account on FS. He can look up and do whatever he wants to do other outside that. When the docs need to be uploaded on Cargo X before or after the vessel departure? Actually, actually, documents are finalized and are in ready state after the vessel departs. Before that, they are in a sense draft or actually non, in, non, in a, not in a final state. So once, the, and this is from the business. I'm not not talking about an opinion per se. It is it is the fact that uh, that we are uh, actually came to know, and uh, that we learned. And uh, mm -hmm. that is why uh, this document can be sent whenever they are ready. And usually they will be after the vessel departs with a day or more than a day even. Of course, you can wait even for a week and then send them. Oh, okay. it, nothing, will nothing will happen except that the transaction, you would have lost an opportunity to get things faster. OK. Actually, this is a very good news for us. Because initially it was it was two days before 
that's yes, a departure. Yes, 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 yes. But that now is this is a very, very good, uh, yes. <laughs> very yes. good news. Very good flexibility. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. The invoice, the invoice must be legalized in the import or export. Legalized being what? Stand, it's it's an invoice for an import for a shipment that is uh, exported to Egypt, or what? I, I don't get yeah. the question accurately. Yeah, I would I would assume so. Yeah, does the invoice have to be legalized? No, no, no. This is uh, no. Is the robotic process automation active? The exporters can send the invoice on PDF now. Uh, it, it is in the process. We are putting the things together because, as I mentioned, this is, uh, in a sense, a third-party service that will be enabled via cargo exporter. It will be, it will be, and we are taking the 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 the, the effort to make it up and ready before before. Uh, before uh, before the beginning of October. One thing I need to mention here uh, is that uh, if you are an exporter and you would use that uh, service and it's the first time for you to, let's say, upload your PDF file to that service, that service would need some time to learn, to learn what you have sent in order to be able to automatically understand it or extract the data from it. So that is why uh, actually that service which I mentioned we are now encouraging those of you who are actually interested, would be interested in doing so, to send us templates. Where we will communicate that through the importers here in Egypt, by the way. Say, please, if, if your exporter will be doing that, please bring us a uh, sample shot, uh, sample examples of high quality examples of those uh, invoices so that the machine on the RPA can take its time to learn it at quality that would be high so that when the time comes and you log in and call for that with an actual invoice that you are sending, the machine would be able to extract the data uh, confidently and, 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 and bring you the data uh, without any errors. You mentioned three options to attach an invoice. Yeah, basically the question is, can we choose the option we like sure. or every option for some cases? No, not every option. If you have SAP or whatever software, at the moment it's SAP. Uh, you don't need to go to that. You take that option. That's it. You generate from your system the XML message and you go to Cargo X, uh, upload it as part of the other documents. If you are using Please. the RPA, once you obtain the output of the RPA and you're satisfied with it, go to Cargo X and upload that output, which will be in an Excel file. If you are uh, if you are inputting, if you have a very small uh, sized invoice, it's a one line item. It doesn't need to do anything. It's just a few minutes. You can do it. Type, open that Excel file, tick, 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 fill in those fields mm. and then upload that Excel file into CargoX. Anyway, it will suffice. And if we go to Oracle or anything else, we will add the options so that you can pick, pick and choose from whatever suits you best. So the next question I, I give the answer yeah, uh, was like, uh, which company must be registered in AFISA, export and import only or all companies? The exporter registers on Cargo X only, the importer registers on AFISA. Correct. Right. What you're Good. saying, correct, Jan. Yeah. Me, me as an importer must pay any charges to receive my docs via Cargo X? No, you are an importer, you mean? Yes. Yeah. As an no, importer, course. No. Pay no, any no. charges to receive docs via Cargo X? No. no. Actually, it is actually the uh, the other way around. It is the exporter who carries an extra charge or a charge pays for the service itself, and then and, uh, and then of course uh, you would receive all the documents without anything. It's paid you one saw, time. You saw already the next question. Since are there charges on Cargo X for registering the account and or uploading each envelope? My info is yes, and if so, yeah, are they fixed worldwide or different from country to country? Now I just read out what I what I received. Yeah. So you may you may you may give a, a, a brief idea to the charges on Cargo X. Uh, Vieran, would you yeah. my colleague? Yeah. 
Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Good to yes, see I'm you. here. Hello, oh, Jan. Hello, you. hello, everyone. Nice. Uh, good to be here today again. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes. Uh, in regard of, of of the question, so all the prices for the for the services are listed on the on the platform, and they're fixed globally, so no difference for for countries. And uh, document uh, submission and transaction through Carvex to Nafesa is set on three dollar per document, no matter the size or type of the file. And the filing fee for ACI envelope uh, is fixed uh, on the amount of. 50 US dollars, five zero. No matter how many times you're using the same ACID, if you need to refile or uh, add additional document to that ACID number. So you will pay that cost of filing only once per ACID number. So let me ask you, Viren, a question to make to make it clear to the audience. Suppose I had a file, so I'll, I'm an exporter. I'll pay $50 to open uh, th that envelope. I put in my documents and I ship them. Now the importer in Cairo, received an invoice and he has some issues in it. He said, oh, oh, he missed on one, two things or whatever that. He will communicate with me as an exporter, say, Gamal, this invoice you sent me is not, it's missing on this one or two things. I'll do the necessary needful and issue the proper, if I may call it proper invoice, and I need to ship it again to Egypt via CargoX. So I will open that same envelope, although I sent it first time, I wouldn't pay anything else, but I, I pay $3 for the invoice that I'm going to send again, am I right? Yes, correct. Only okay. trans transaction, blockchain transaction, we will charge for. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and there was uh, uh, another question mentioned in uh, earlier sessions. Yeah. Can I now club all the documents into one PDF to save cost? Yeah, you can try. As as we said okay. that time again. <laughs> No, it is not. It is not uh, from from the business. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it it won't work. Why? Let me tell you the truth, because actually the documents that you are sending would be related to more than one entity. It's not like customs only, and each one needs to look into its own documents only. So we need to know exactly what is what has been sent. So if there are validations, if they are to be redirected, then we know exactly what to do. Thank you. No. Now, thank you indeed. Uh, uh, I have like 20 more questions and we have 20 minutes left. Yeah, just to give you a, yeah. So thank you indeed so far for answering all these questions. Yeah, so we'll speed up a little bit yeah, in order to adhere to all the questions, or most of the questions. Yeah, uh, I have a Euro 1 certificate for my goods. The invoice must be sent by the Chamber of Commerce to implement the exemption. No, it's uh, the Euro one and the ILAC, as I was mentioning. Now we are working. You don't need to do that. You will just send send us a PDF of that document. And once the shipment comes here, the officer in the Minister of uh, Trade, who is responsible for looking into this, will check it. The, will check the, and validate the, uh, verify the authenticity online with the Euro one authority or agency. Yeah. So in the next one is uh, into the same direction. So for certificate of origin. It's required as document, but no attesting from required, right? That was the yes, unless unless, as I said, if there is uh, uh, there is uh, related uh, exemptions and stuff at the moment, as I speak, as I speak at this very moment. But no, the certificate of origin you wouldn't need. Now, wouldn't Cargo need. X, yeah, Cargo X. I created two accounts for my company on Cargo X. Is it OK or I should contact customer service to delete one of them? Also, why can't I reach to the customer services when I want to ask any question or I need support? Call us if you need support. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Vieran, this may be something for you. Yes, of course. Yeah? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, all customer uh, support team is available at uh, support at cargox.io. Uh, we have now over 10 people in support team. Uh, they are specialized in different fields from verification of blockchain key, uh, help for uh, company registration, etc., etc. So, uh, but uh, also, help is available in online chat box on on the platform while you are working on the platform. So uh, I don't know what was the question. Maybe it was more like a comment. Uh, I don't know when that happened, but nowadays I can see there is no backlog in in any any 
uh, request because I'm I'm, work, I'm working in the same system, so I can see all the requests and how many how many questions there are uh, directed to our support team. Uh, regarding two accounts, yes, uh, yeah. th this is yeah, uh, no. yeah, yeah, yes, of course. So uh, usually, if uh, it is the same company, so then uh, we are asking the customer, we are approaching the customer not to delete either one of them because you might lose some data. So then uh, we are merging those two accounts into one. That's the process with the, with yes. the with the approval of the company. Uh, thanks indeed. And uh, if there's if there's for whatever reason phone lines down or whatever, yeah, contact us. Yeah, uh, we can answer a lot of questions, or we can uh, get you in touch. Yeah, if something is really getting stuck. Um, we are an importing company. Yeah, as we are an exclusive partner to some reputable security and access control international as HID and Evolis, etc. So we did have an account registered already and we are about to acquire our e-token. The question is, do we need more than one if dealt with a facilitator clearance services company or can we all use that account is it one account per company or can we have more than one actually if i understand the question clearly uh, a, a, a token is a personal device so if you have more than one person each one if every one of them needs to have one because why because this e-token has a legal legal percussion Whatever you use or any action you use using that e-token is registered and by that user. So if I say this document was OK and if suppose customs goes and then finds something completely different, they would look. They don't have the document any longer. They do that. They would look into the system, see who has has been co-signed by who by Gamal code. Then Gamal code needs to be called for to go to, to court. So each and every one has to, 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 to have one. If you are outsourcing your brokerage services to a brokerage house, that brokerage house should be registered on FASA on his own. Not You have nothing to do with them. He will have to register himself and register subsequently all his subordinates, the staff members, the individuals who are working for that com brokerage company. So when you as an importer say, I outsource Gamal Kotz brokerage firm, you by nature, you will any staff member in Gamal Kotz firm as a broker will be able to service you without anything else. See what I mean? So you register yourself as an importer with your staff members in that, in that company. Broker offices will be registered as companies with their staff members. You as an importer have the right to really uh, delegate or authorize a bro one or more broker office to do jobs for you. Yeah, and one company, one account, yeah, now not talking yes. about subdelegation. However, yeah, one account may have more tokens, yeah, uh, however, they are individualized, right? Yes. Okay. Is our conversation identical on the courier also? This, would you understand? No, uh, say it again, please. Yeah, is our conversation identical on the courier also? Okay, let's let's uh, Karin. I may ask you. You may get back question number seventeen, so we have a more clear understanding, and we resume or we carry on to eighteen. Huh? Will ACI result in no physical documents couriering at all? If yes, what happens to CID shipment cash against documents? Yeah, at which documents? are sent from bank to bank? Actually, the cash against documents, you don't need bank to bank. The Egyptian bank, uh, central, the Egyptian central bank for cash against documents, open accounts and uh, whatever they call it, uh, the, the open accounts, uh, advanced payments, uh, they would actually uh, receive, receive the electronic documents that Nafesa has received from your good selves as exporters, and it will these documents will be routed to the bank. The bank will rely on them after having been co-signed by the importer. 
So the document arrives, Tanafeza, importer reviews and says, this is accurate, I, I'm sure, I'm, I'm okay with that. Please proceed with the bank. The bank will receive these documents, the, 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 the visual pictures, along with the data with them. And uh, he will be proceeding with wiring the, 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 the money to your good self in accordance. Now, in some cases for cash against documents, there might be instructions. They call it, I think, they call it cover letters. This is a term that's used within the banks here, at least in Egypt. So if, for example, if the money will not be transferred at the same moment, you have a three month or six month grace period or any other condition, uh, this this document in itself, the cover letter or the special instruction will be a document that you, you will send as an exporter uh, via Cargo X to an AFISA to the bank. So the bank will not make anything. He will respect that and he will do the needful as per the instruction itself. So absolutely. Uh, the the uh, idea of the digitization process is no documents. This we got. Would yes. You, would you be... Would you be able to comment uh, whether this is already in place? Yeah, when when we started, uh, uh, that the banks do not need any more uh, physical no. documents. No, no, that did that was not in the earlier stage of the, of the project when we started talking about the ACI. Uh, once we got things stabilized in a way or another, we approached the central bank. We have been in constant communication with them, technical and business, and they actually approved of the idea and the concept. As I speak to you. Now we are having daily technical meetings to have things uh, ready ASAP. That being said, there are two things. This doesn't mean that uh, actually the banks, uh, the, the banks will be as ready as uh, what I'm saying as of October 1st. It is, I think, anticipated that it will be uh, end of November. Okay. So, so, so from the technical standpoint, I mean the banks receiving the electronic documents and acting electronically without this piece of paper, the, most probably I do not expect that it will be as ready as I expect. Why? Because the, the banks have their own security and testing and thing uh, levels that they need to really make sure that nothing goes wrong with this. Uh, and, and the other statement I'd like to say, this does not, of course, include the LOC, uh, the LOC, the letters of credit issue. We will be embarking. We are going to start discussing the same issue for LOCs and definitely the electronic bills of lading that you, the one you were mentioning, Jan, earlier, that will be starting very, very soon once we, once we are happy with the, with, with, with the first part. Not in right. terms of action, but uh, we agree to every single thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, before I before I go to the next question, yeah, uh, since uh, we will not be managing to answer all the questions, but don't you worry, nothing is get lost. Yeah, we will do that after this session and we will post it on our website. Yeah, so uh, nothing is going to get lost. I have a shipment with multiple supplier goods all in one container. Sure. Usually we issue separate house BL and a master BL. Sure. How to process such shipments? Do I have to get an a, a ACID number for each supplier or one for the master? Okay, uh, now for uh, you have two options. Of course, if you have a ma master and house bills of lading, all right, the, the, the master bill of lading in itself will have an ACID, whereby whereby the two partners who will who are not the owners of the ship, neither the exporters nor the importers. He's the freight forwarder for you abroad and a freight forwarder for the importer here in Egypt. So the the Egyptian the Egyptian uh, the Egyptian uh, freight forwarder will ask, will request what we call, in a sense, a master ACID application, whereby no details because he's not the owner of the goods. He will say, I'm, 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 I'm asking for an ACID for a group, in a sense, of, of, of shipments, if I may call them, underneath one consolidated uh, shipment. And in this regard, the, his counterpart, freight forwarder, when putting the container on, on the vessel, the bill of lading that will be coming, number one, is the master bill of lading. So it's referring to the master ACID number. That being said, now the details, the breakdown of those uh, various uh, shipments for the different, uh, for the different, uh, from the different manufacturers or exporters, and or one or more importer. By the way, could be consolidation for one importer or a consolidated shipment for more than one importer. Both the same. Each and every house has to have an ACID, so we would know who the, the final concernee is, 
and who is the shipper? Who is the shipper for that particular part of the ship? So there are no yeah. yeah. Sorry. There are no multiple VAT ID fields in Cargo X for one company. Yeah, which have several VAT registrations. If a company has several VAT IDs, does it have to register multiple times or only once? May I take this one, please? Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, yes, uh, we handled that uh, in the past, and some companies really they they register themselves uh, with each and every VAT number separately. And uh, right now, as we talk, uh, like Mr. Gamal likes to say, uh, our our development team is working on that uh, additional fields where you can add all of your VAT numbers. Uh, if you have VAT, for example, for Czech Republic and your primary VAT is in Germany. So basically, it, there will be an option to add uh, secondary uh, VAT numbers on, under your account. It's not still available. So it will take maybe maybe a week or, or, or two, but uh, for sure it will be available before October 1st. However, to expedite it everything, you, we, we strongly recommend to, to, to continue registration with every uh, VAT separately. And later on, without any charges or effort, we can merge all those accounts into one. So that's also possible for, for, for the users not to wait with anything, not to delay or postpone anything. So that would be my answer now. Thank you indeed. Uh, in the in the interest of time, yeah, since I have a couple of hands up, yeah, kindly, dear guests, allow me to break your your uh, uh, questions which you put in the chat now. But we would get back, yeah, uh, to these questions, yeah, and uh, we'll find an answer, yeah, and uh, we'll post it on our website. Yeah, kindly bear with me. But uh, I would yeah, rather yeah, go to Ibrahim Raghi now, yeah, who raised the hand and uh, who raised the hand for some time already yeah, to ask the first question. Hi, sir. How are you? How are you, Mr. Gamal? I just have a question. I want to make, I want to make sure what is the, the, the steps that we should be working on. So as I understand, the supplier will send me the documents and then i will upload it on the system to take a code and send it back to him so he confirms it and then we move on I, i'm a bit confused of the, the steps that we should be working okay on. now okay thank you ibrahim uh, it's much simpler than this you are the importer okay you decide you would you are embarking on a export importing something from abroad from a supplier okay Number one, all you need to do, you need to have, of course, an account and a, and a, and a token on, on Nafisa. You will use your account to go in and request new import ACIC application form. So the system knows that you are Ibrahim Raghi. It wouldn't ask you for anything. It will ask you, OK, sir, will, who are you going to import from? So you will, you will say, you type in the VAT ID of your exporter, all right? So your exporter should be registered on Cargo X because I don't know your exporter to begin with. And we need, as I said earlier, he needs to be verified. So in this case, that's why I'm urging everybody from the export uh, exporters uh, world to be on Cargo X, even, even if they won't, are not going to start by sending documents from abroad, even though. Please put them. Why? So that when you come to fill in the application form, you know you, Ibrahim, say, who are you going to import from? So you tell me, you wouldn't tell me from, uh, for example, from Sony and Sons in Germany. I don't know Sony and Sons in Germany. You'll tell, type a VAT ID, the Cargo X actually, ID of Sony and Sons. So the system will tell you, ah, okay, it's Sony and Sons in Dusseldorf or whatever, this, this, and this and that. Okay, what is it that you are going to import? You'll say, I'm importing, suppose, radios, televisions, whatever that you are about to import. You add for a few more fields and you submit. Maximum 48 hours, you will get ACID reference number to your shipment that you requested. Okay? All right. That number, by the way, is going to be sent to your exporter, Sony and Stans in Dusseldorf. All right? He will receive an email with a, for that. He'll tell him, sir, 
your there's an Egyptian importer by the name of Ibrahim Ragi, VAT ID number one, two, three, four, five. He says he's going to import this type of shipment from you as an exporter. Please stipulate that ACID number on the shipping docs. So you Sony and Sons in Dusseldorf, when he prepares everything, manufactures, consolidates, goes to the trans, transfers to the port, da, 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 da. the documents are ready. It is Sony and Sons who will be sending to you the documents of the shipment. He will he will actually sign into Cargo X, upload the documents, request to send. You will receive automatically once we receive them in Nafiza. You will get at the very same moment you will get a message and an email says, "Sir, you have received documents for your shipment number one two three four five one two three four five being the ACID number that you obtained a few days ago or a week ago." You would open and see. Use your account, you will see every single document. Okay, the document you accept, you will say, I accept using your token. So, as if you signed on the document, next document, the message, the, the packing list, suppose you like it. Okay, approve, 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 approve. Everything is all approved. You we may need to fill in additional fields for Egyptian purposes. Whatever the additional fields for local processing and customs, you will fill, you will fill those fields. Once you are done, you say, okay, please proceed with customs. Please proceed with bank. So the documents and the data will go to the customs, to the GOA, to NFSA, to all the agencies concerned. And it would, the documents will go to the bank to, to be ready to process your form for and do the, uh, the wiring, the uh, money transfer to, to Sony and Sons uh, when, you, when you go there to the bank to pay any commission or any service fees, whatever it is. See what I mean? So you do not have to upload anything. You are mute. You are, I mean, your microphone is muted. Sorry. So I don't yeah. need to have documents in hands of all of this for the bank? You, didn't need, you, you don't need to have what? The original documents by the supplier after all this. No, once they are, if, if the cycle is going to be actually completed, no, you don't need the originals. You don't need that. OK, so uh, so you what, can so I'll what, tell you what, something uh, you can call. I mean, uh, you have the uh, the uh, customer service uh, phone number and email. We'll have somebody talk to you and maybe actually take you in an online session to really illustrate everything for you. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just uh, appreciating the, the time for the others. Um, I'm just giving you a thumbs up on it. And you can have all the details from our end. Uh, look into it. Please pay a visit to nafiza.gov.eg. It has a lot. It has plenty of information that you would find interesting. And uh, and you can always call us. OK, thank you, Mr. Gama. Thank you, Ibrahim. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Engineer Gamal, for, for running us through the process again. Yeah, this is uh, uh, very insightful. Yeah, for I believe all of us now. Now we we run out of time. Uh, so one one thing, uh, if two more raised hands, Elaine. Yeah, I'll give you thirty seconds. Yeah, sorry, since we have two more raised hands, and uh, yeah, you've been a part of our discussion already a couple of times. Okay, no, no, no problem. I just want to maybe uh, I repeat the question of uh, Mr. Ibrahim that uh, regarding the original document because this is also very very important. If we mm -hmm. will go to inform the exporter, do not ship the original document to us or to the customer. We need at least a written confirmation or a written instruction from, sure. from your side. Yes. So my question is: there is any written instruction? coming from the customs authority on, or from the fi Ministry of Finance about this, that we don't need any more uh -huh. she original shipping document because also again, let me mention Mr. Kotov that initially at, at the beginning of this uh, come system, to an end we said that our you... Come to an end, you Okay, it was said that no, still the original document needed for the yeah, customs yeah. to clear the sure. goods or like I'm you sorry, one... Mr. Gamal, I, I can take the answer on this one very quickly and in a very short manner. That's already have been sent to you 
uh, two or three times. It has been communicated in Decree 38, and it has been communicated already in the new customs bylaws, which has been sent uh, to everyone. So I think it has been mandated or it has been stated in, in those uh, two documents. Sorry, Mr. Uh, uh, thank you, Walid. Uh, Narto, just to, to wrap it in, in one statement, there will be something even clearer and clearer out of the ministry when, at the moment, comes October 1st, if the banks issue are not the integration with the banks is not yet complete so the banks the banks will need original to be to be coming through the normal channels once everything is there that won't be needed anymore as well it mentioned so that is why you did not maybe hear it because there are still bits and pieces being stitched together to make sure that it's acceptable by all parties concerned but uh, the idea the idea is is like that initially it will be like for example like the LOCs, for example, the LOCs, the banks, since we didn't embark on it yet, you will have to go through the bank to bank process to 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 get uh, to get the documents in place, to get the cargo out. And, and uh, you know, so just just to add one 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 one, one little thing. Sorry to to take uh, a bit of uh, time, Mr. Yan, and if you if you would allow me uh, and Elaine, if, if your exporter has problems with uh, with uh, with sending the original documents, by Cargo X only and not by the DHL, he can send both. If he wants to take both the ways, it's yeah. a waste of time and a waste, waste actually, of waste of time, waste of money. Yes, but if he wants to take this road, it's, it's his own choice. Yes, ma. Actually, I, I would prefer to have this road at least at the beginning until we have this okay. new instruction regarding the bank. If the bank all accepted and if everything is yes. went okay with the Mr. document Lane. uploaded on the Cargo X and it was accepted by the bank, the, the bank and the custom. So no need anymore, but I would like to have both with, to receive the original document with me. So okay, I can, okay. Now done everything understood. Mr. Yeah. Mrs. Reda, since I have two more and I have no time left. Mr. Mrs. Reda, yeah, you raised your hand or is it? It's gone, so, so yeah, Shreef, Sab Shreef Salama. Salama. Shreef Salama. Okay. Yes, hello. Uh, thank hello. you for taking my question. I hope my voice is clear. Yes, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, I have a different situation at which I uh, ship a lot of orders in separate commercial invoices on one bill of lading. Sometimes house bill of lading, sometimes master bill of lading. My question here is. Uh, do I have to input a several ACID number for each invoice? My impression that yes, it is per invoice. And if so, shall I, shall I put them all on one bill of lading or I can't do multiple orders in one shipment anymore? That's my you, question. Thank you. you uh, uh, one ACID may include one or many, one or many invoices and you can have them as one consolidated bill of lading or many bills of lading, it's up to you. The system handles both cases. So I will issue one ACI number and put it on several the invoices? In yes, the and each one invoice when it comes, it would refer to the same ACI ID. So we know exactly, so it would be the same declaration that would be actually having uh, as many invoices as you have. We have declarations that have 20 and 20 plus invoices on one declaration, they will all come to one ACID. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. So the final one, yeah, and thank you very much for your patience, yeah. Uh, the final one is Mr. or Mrs. Reda. I saw you unmuted, now you're there. Go ahead. Try again. We did not hear you. I saw you unmute, but we didn't hear you. Try. I'm afraid we can't hear you. No, you don't come through, I'm afraid. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, you may address us. Yeah, drop us a line. Yeah, uh, either in the chat or via email. Uh, we'll get back to you since we can't hear you. Having said that, since we are the since we are late, yeah, uh, engineer Gamal, yeah, Viran, um, so grateful for your fantastic assistance, yeah, over time, over the time, and you'll see, 
lots of questions, yeah, lots of uh, things to clarify. And uh, certainly this is uh, going to continue. Dear guests, um, you may ask directly by using a hotline. You may get back to ask us. Us, yeah, we'll try to assist you as well, even if it comes to your registration, um, whether it's local, yeah, uh, as an importer or as an exporter. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having been a part of this session. Yeah, stay healthy, and yeah, uh, I I hope yeah that everything runs smooth, starting yeah uh, October first. Thanks for having you. Have a nice afternoon. All thank the best. Thank you. Same to thank you. you. Have a very good day. Thank you. Same to thank you. Thank you, dear guests. I'll talk to you later. Hopefully, please get ready. Thank you. Please get ready. We will be there for you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Register today. Yep. Bye. See you all.